Jesus name We are your dwelling place So have no Your dwelling, we are your dwelling. So 
believe that before we leave this house today and before we go about our schedules and our agendas and getting all the stuff done that we need to get done and everything that's on our to-do list, I believe that if we will just entertain the presence of God today, lives can be changed this morning. Families can be changed. This morning. I believe that with all of my heart. I've come expecting God. Sunday morning party you're going to find in Lafayette. Sunday morning at the POL. I love my church family. I love being able to join together with each and every one of you, all of our guests that are in the house today. Would you do us one favor and before you're seated would you turn around to somebody near you and welcome them to the POL. Give somebody a high five, hug their neck, shake their hand. Smile at somebody and let them know how great it is to see your church family and your friends in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen, amen. We're so thankful for each and every one of you here today. I don't know about you, but I love my church family. There's no, no other group of people I would rather spend my Sunday mornings with and spend my life with than the church of the living God. I love my POL family. We're so honored to have all of you with us this morning, our guests that are here today and all those tuning in online via our live stream. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. It is good to see Sister Wilda back in the house of the Lord. If you... If you question the hand of God, just a few weeks ago she was driving home and uh, someone pulled out in front of her, T-boned her car, totaled her vehicle, pushed her off the road into the, into the median, the side of the road, and uh, thankfully not a broken bone, nothing, just a couple little scratches. God's hand is real. God's protection is real. Testify that God has ever kept you and protected you. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, there's something supernatural in this place this morning. There's something supernatural brewing. There's something in the spirit brewing right now. Healing is here. Miracles are here. God's hand is true. It's real. And if God a script to stick to. Hold on. I, my goodness, it's not time for the sermon yet. But God is good. Amen. Amen. We're so happy to have all of you with us. If you would please at this time take out your phones and scan the QR code on the screen to, just to let us know that you're worshiping with us today. If you would like a connect card, our hostess team, our, our, these ladies have uh, some extras. If you would like one of those, just please raise your hand and these ladies will get you a connect card. And if you would please take a moment, complete that connect page uh, or the connect card and uh, we would greatly appreciate that. Again, this is just how we know who is with us on Sunday mornings and it's how we keep you updated of everything that's going on. And if you have a prayer request, please put those prayer requests, those, those needs, those things please put that on your connect page and we will certainly join with you in, in prayer over the coming days. So please take a moment and check in and let us know you're here today. This Wednesday, everybody say this Wednesday. This Wednesday night, we're all going to be together right here in the worship center for first Wednesday worship at 7 p.m. And it's going to be a little different. I know we don't like different. But you're going to want to be here at 7 o'clock Wednesday night. It's going to be a night of worship, and we're going to come into this place, and we're going to invite the presence of God to meet us here. And I believe that God is going to move in a special, mighty way on Wednesday night at 7. And then this week, we kick off the month of August. That's even weird to talk about. We're already in August. We're already getting back to school. But this coming Saturday, August 6th, is our monthly men's and ladies' prayer at 9 a.m., 
Uh, men will meet in the event center. The ladies will meet right here in the worship center. And you have been hearing it for months, but this church is going to be a church not in Lafayette, but a church of Lafayette. We're going to be a church connected to our community. So every month when we have our men's and ladies prayer, the first Saturday of the month, immediately following that at 10 a.m., we're going to have Community Connect. And we have an outreach team that is putting some things together, uh, an evangelism team putting some plans together. And if you're here for prayer, we ask that you join us from 10 to 11, just a short time. But we're going to reach out into our community. We're going to connect with those in the neighborhoods around our church and businesses. And we're going to be a church of this community. We don't want to just be uh, like hiding it under a bushel, the Bible says, but God has put a city on a hill in Lafayette, and we're going to connect with, with our community. So that's this Saturday, and then Sunday will be our annual back-to-school service, and I want to encourage all of our students and anyone that is faculty or staff of a school or the school board, please join us next Sunday. Even if you have a neighbor or a family member that works in the school board, or to school, invite them to come. We're going to pray over this coming school year. And all of the students, make sure you bring your backpacks next Sunday. You don't have to bring your books. There's not going to be any tests, but bring your backpacks. We're going to pray over those backpacks, and each backpack will get a prayer cloth, and uh, we're going to cover our students and the teachers and faculty uh, staff in prayer for protection and guidance and academics. And uh, we're believing that this is going to be the greatest school year for our students, and we're going to see great revival. A great revival come from our schools in, in this year. And then August 8th and 12th, next week, will be our church-wide prayer and fast week. Each day there's going to be a specific prayer focus that you can, you and your family can join with your church family in praying over, and then we're going to... Uh, join together in fasting. And there are many different ways you can fast. Uh, we know that because of dietary restrictions or maybe medical uh, restrictions, you may not be able to do a complete fast. But we are asking that you partake in some way, shape, or form, whether it be a, a Daniel fast, maybe a partial fast, maybe a media fast, something something that is a sacrifice to you that God you can draw closer to God and unify with your family. And then Sunday, August 7th, next uh, Sunday as well, immediately follow service we'll be holding our next foundation series classes and this series of classes is for all of our new members and any POL members who have not yet completed the foundation class if you just want more information about the POL maybe you're looking for a, a home church we we invite you to attend that our foundation series is vital to getting you connected to the POL and getting you plugged in and finding your purpose in the kingdom of God because everybody has a purpose you were not created to just attend church you were created to serve his kingdom and be a witness, and we want you to find your purpose in his kingdom. So please register at the QR code at the website so that we can know how many to prepare for. A lot of great things coming up in the coming weeks for POL. Make sure you're tuned in to all of our social media outlets, the calendar, and connected to everything that's going on. We want you to be a part of it. I don't know about you, but God has proven his faithfulness time and time again through health issues, through financial issues, through family issues, you name it, God has always been faithful. And before we give in our Sunday morning offering, we want to go to the Lord in prayer right now because we know that there are issues that you brought with you today. You can pretend we can put on a good face because it's Sunday and we can wear, we can wear the suit and the tie and the dress and we can fix the hair up nice. But some of us are still battling some serious issues. But I know a God that can step in and he can bring peace in the middle of a storm. He can bring comfort in the middle of chaos. He can bring healing to cancer, diabetes, back pain. My, you name it, God can bring healing to that situation. So right now all over this building, if there's something that you just, you need an answer from the Lord, would you just raise your hand right now as we go to him in prayer? Lord, you see the hands that are raised. Lord, we come before you right now. We come before you humbly but also boldly as your word says, knowing that if we cast our cares on you, you will take care of them. We know that if we call on your name, you hear the cries of your people. God, I pray right now that your healing power begin to sweep across this worship center. Lord, those that came into this place this morning hurting, struggling, 
worrying, dealing with things, God, I pray that your anointing would settle in this place right now. Lord, that your healing touch would begin to touch men and ladies, families and homes, hearts and minds today. Lord, let your will be done in this place. Lord, as we give back to you in our offering and our tithing, Lord, bless it for your purpose. Anoint it for your kingdom. Multiply it to be used in this city, Lord. We want everyone to have a chance to hear this beautiful gospel message and experience a life-changing experience of the Holy Ghost, God. Bless it today and anoint it. Lord, have your way in this place. We love you and we pray right now that your will be done. God, I pray we remove every distraction, remove every obstacle, the things that would try to keep us and hinder us from focusing on you, God. We're here for you. We're here to worship you this morning. God, let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now? Amen, amen. As the ushers are coming by, I want you to remember that no matter what you're facing, God can turn it around. No matter how bleak it looks, God can turn the situation around this morning. He can turn the family around. He can turn the job around. He can turn the doctor's diagnosis around. So I wonder right now if you would just begin to set the atmosphere. If you believe God can turn it around, would you just begin to clap this morning? Would you tell God?
something great in this house this morning. As we begin to sing this next song, why don't you lift your hands towards heaven? Whatever you feel to do in this moment that's about to happen, because I'm believing that God's going to move in this place. Jesus is going to walk down every aisle, and whatever need you're facing, whatever situation you need God to touch, I'm believing that God's going to do it this morning, right now, in the name of Jesus. This is a house of worship. Yes. This is a place of praise where every demon trembles, where we proclaim your name. This is a house of
just a moment and lift your hands all over this place right now. There's such a sweet presence of the Holy Ghost here this morning. Whatever it is you're facing, whatever the issue is, this is a house of miracles. This is a house where God begins to move. In His presence, healing abides. In His presence, liberty can be found. In His presence, deliverance can be attained. turning to the New Testament book of Romans and if you've been here on Wednesday nights you know we've been talking about Paul and what his life represented and exemplified and if you haven't been here on Wednesday nights my goodness you have you're missing out you are missing out but today I want to look at another one of Paul's letters to the church in Rome the book of Romans chapter 13 and again to all of our guests that are here today what an honor it is to have you with the POL this morning we are so happy and thrilled and blessed that you have joined us this morning and and I just we want you to make yourself at home you are welcome here however you feel to worship you're going to see people clapping you're going to see people maybe crying you're going to see people hands raised you're going to see people standing, kneeling. All that is, is worship. And we want you to feel welcome to worship however you feel God moving upon you. Don't, don't compare your worship to somebody else. Because your worship reflects your story. And I just want to encourage you, however you feel God moving on you today, in the middle of this message, if you just feel to come pray at the altar, you won't bother me a bit. If you feel to just stand and lift your hand, you won't bother me a bit. But I believe that before we leave this place, God is going to do some miraculous things in this house. Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Paul says, love does no harm to a neighbor. Now I'm going to stop right there because this in of, in of itself is a sermon. It's a whole series. It's a, it's a lifestyle lesson. You have to understand Paul's reason for writing to the book of Romans. We don't have time to get into it, but you see him telling them love does no harm to a neighbor. In other words, your greatest testimony and your greatest witness might just be an act of kindness. Your greatest witness is not even really, well, look at the church that I go to. It's not. Your greatest witness is, well, I've been living this for 75 years. That's a great testimony, but that's not your greatest witness. Paul says, I want you to remember, love is your greatest witness. And when you love people, when you love your neighbor, he says, they may harm you, but love does no harm to them. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, here, here's the key. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Verse 11, he says, and do this, knowing the time that now, everybody say now. Now, now it is high time to wake out of your sleep. For now, everybody say now. now. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. Oh, I, I have a hope knowing that from the day that I was born to now, I'm, I'm that much closer to my God. I'm that much closer to knowing. 
hearing him and seeing him. I'm 37 years closer to walking the streets of gold with him. We are, for now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Verse 12, he says, the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. This morning for the next few minutes, if I could have your attention, if we could just, just put every distraction aside, I want to preach on this topic. It's about time. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's about time. Now is the time. Now our salvation is nearer than it ever has been. Now it's high time to wake up, church. Now it's time to get to work, church. Well, I got six of you on that one. Now is not the time to sit back and get comfortable. Now is the time for the church to be the church. Now is the time for the church to act like the church. Now is the time to let God do what God's been wanting to do for a long time. It's about time to let God do what God wants to do. Would you give the Lord one more hand clap of praise this morning? Oh, now is the high time to wake out of sleep this morning. Amen, amen. You can be seated. It's about time to be seated. But it's about time to get back up again. Time is something we all wish we had more of. Every single one of us, if we were honest with ourselves, we want more time. We want more time for family. We want more time to get stuff done. We want more time to run our errands and uh, be productive. We want more, uh, we rarely want more time for school, but we need more time for studying. <laughs> We need more time for kids and activities and we wish we had more time to golf and fish and hunt and read and, and we wish we had more time for the hobbies and all the things that we wish we could do because we just ran out of time. In our youth, we feel invincible. We feel like we can take over the world. We feel like we have all the time in the world when we're young. How many times have you told yourself, I'll do that later. I'll do that when I have time. I'll do that when life isn't so busy. I'll do that when life is less chaotic. We, from our youth, we feel like we have all the time in the world. And then you blink, the wind blows, you turn around, and now you're married and you have kids of your own, and you're wondering where the time went. You're wondering now why when you get out of bed in the morning, your knees make sounds they never used to make. <laughs> Because I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Father Time is undefeated. That's why the greatest athletes in the world, at the greatest shape, physical, the, the pinnacle of physical athleticism and shape, even they find time to retire. Because Father Time is undefeated. Even all the time they spend in the gym and working out and all of the time preparation for one game on a Sunday or one, one sprint during the Olympics, all the time and preparation is still not enough to fight off father time. And then your children start having children. All my grandparents in the house, how quick did it happen for you? Amen. I remember when we told my parents that we were expecting our first kid, Jackson, and my, my dad, uh, he, we, we took him to lunch and we had this little bag and in the bag was a little thing of the little booties and the socks and the sonogram picture and, and my dad, he looks at it and he goes, what is this? <laughs> I, I said, dad, I know it's been a while since you've had kids, but that's a sonogram and you're gonna be a grandpa. Dad goes, oh, I'm not. <laughs> His first words out of his mouth were, I'm too young to be a grandpa. He said, they're not even going to call me grandpa. I don't want to be a papa. So he's Buddy because Buddy's young. He's not a grandpa. He's a Buddy because time sneaks up on you. It does. Next year, we'll be celebrating our 20-year high school graduation. 20, ye 20 years. Time has a way of creeping up on you. 
But in all actuality, I wonder if we truly understand the concept of time when it comes to the kingdom of God. Because we first must understand that when it comes to time and when it comes to things of the kingdom and the things of the Lord, we cannot do it our own way. We don't dictate time. We don't dictate how God works. It doesn't work that way. We can't control what, what life throws at us. If we could, I'm sure that our stories in this place today would be a quite different from the stories that you have lived out. I'm sure we could go back in time and we would want to go back in time and change some things and make some different decisions and, and, and have some different relationships and do some things better and, and spend some time on some more important things. But we don't get to do that because time is of the essence. That's why the prophet Ecclesiastes says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. In other words, every there's a time for joy and there's a time for laughter. There's a time for gladness. There's a time for victory. There's a time for defeat. There's a time for joy. There's a time for sorrow. There's, there's a time for laughing and a time for weeping. There's a time for heartache. To everything there is a time and a season according to the king kingdom of the Lord. But I want to tell you this morning that no matter what act of life you find yourself in, no matter how young or how old you are, kids, grandkids, no kids, single, married, it does not matter. I may, I want to tell you, we need a church and a people that call themselves the people of God to rise up and say, it's time to stop playing games. It's time to stop going through the motions, and it's about time to start letting God move the way God wants to move. It's about to, I may have had to struggle through some things. I may have had to struggle through some hurt, and I may have to fight through some darkness, some times of darkness, and some seasons of sadness, but I want to tell you this morning, without a doubt in my mind, it is time to stand up and let God's light so shine before men. We live in a dark world, and he has put a church in this world, not to hide it under a basket or a bushel, but to be a city on a hill, because it's time for God's light to so shine before men. And you want to know how his light shines? It's through the vessels that call themselves Christians. It's through the men and women who are born again, bought with a price, baptized in his name. Those are the people. That's how his light so shines before men. It's not always through a church building. It's not always through a worship service. It's not even always through a sermon. But it's through his people who are in the world but not of the world. Because I have bought you with a price. I have paid for you. You belong to me. And now it's time to let the light so shine before men. The time has come to stop beating yourselves up because you have a little trouble on the job. I have seen people's lives destroyed because they got laid off. And I'm not negating that. I'm not, I'm not minimizing that at all. But I want to tell you, maybe God was trying to get you out of a situation and into a new season where you could be effective. But you have got hung up in the past and you got hung up in what other people were trying to do to you that you could not move past it. I want to tell you right now, I don't know what you've dealt with in the past, but it's time for a new season. It's time to move forward. It's time to step out in faith and say, God, whatever you have in store, I'm going for it. I'm moving forward. Whatever you have in store for me God it's time to do it it's time to get over the generational curses it's time to put some things on the altar it's time to say look addiction you've got to go depression you've got to go oppression you've got to go it's time to say I've got a promise and there may be a season for everything there may be a season for joy, but there may be a season for sorrow. But right now, I'm stepping into a new season, and I'm going to put some things on the altar because I know the promise that God has for me. God would not be so worried about bringing you out of your past if he didn't already secure your future. But what about that? And what about back then? And what about when I did that? And what about when I said this? It doesn't matter, honey. 
because if God brought you out, he's going to bring you through. We put so much weight on the things of the past. We put so much weight on things that happened 10, 15, 20 years ago. God is trying to tell you, it's about time to let me do what I need to do. been telling some of you for a long time, if you will just let go and let God, some miraculous things can happen. But no, we, we want to hold on tight. We want to hold on tight to the traditions and because we've just always done this or what, what mom and dad do and what grandma does and the past was saying we want to hold on to it. But my Bible tells me when we begin to let go, God begins to open up and we begin to see the miraculous works of the Lord. scripture in Proverbs 30 or Psalms 30 we love the there may, weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning boy we love that and we can get lost in that scripture we forget there's a verse 6 we forget that right after this he writes in my prosperity <laughs> in other words when I was weeping during the night now in my prosperity. When I was worried and fearful and I was trying to just endure the night, he said, now in my prosperity, now that God has brought me through it, he says, I shall never be moved. Somebody has a testimony in this place this morning that you've endured some nights, you've endured some hardships, you've endured some pain and some suffering, but now that God has brought you through, I want to tell you, it's time to stand up and say, I will never be moved. What he was saying was even in the times of my weeping, even in the times of my suffering, in the middle of the storm that is rocking my life back and forth, I have made up in my mind, I'm not going to be moved. I might shake a little bit, and I might take a hit every now and then, and I might have to deal with some stuff, but I will never be moved. He said, I've gone through enough. I've been put through the fire long enough. This season of fear has gone on too long. I've lived with my guilt for far too long. And in this hour, we cannot afford to be a people who just sit back and wait on God to move. I have seen so many people just sit back and say, well, God, move whenever you're ready. It doesn't always work that way. We don't have time to just sit back and see what's going to happen. We don't have time to just sit back and say, well, God, whenever you're ready, we're here. We're just going to be sipping our coffee. We're just going to be taking it easy. God, just move whenever you want to move. I want to tell you, there should be some expectation. There's got to be some prayer. There's got to be some seeking the face of the Lord. There's got to be some prayer for the signs and wonders. You want to see revival? Start praying for revival. You want to see miracle signs and wonders? Start praying for miracle signs and wonders. You want to see the hand of God move like it's never moved before? Start praying for the hand of God to move. We shouldn't come into this place and just 
sit back on a Sunday morning and say, well, worship team entertain me. Brother Dom, tickle those keys for me. Make me feel good about myself. Brother Daryl, hit those drums and make me feel good about myself. We ought to be walking through those doors saying, God, what are you going to do today? God, have your way in this place. If there's not even another song, if we don't even get to the sermon, if we don't even get to the announcements, who cares? God, what are you going to do? expecting God to do? I want to ask you that today. What are you expecting God to do? What is it in your life right now that you're expecting God to work a miracle? Do you need Him to restore a relationship? Do you need Him to bring healing to your body? Whatever it is, I want to tell you, if you will come into this place expecting God to move, it gets the attention of the Lord. And the interesting thing is, when that begins to happen, everybody's calling to be a witness begins to take place because you become a walking, living, talking testimony of what the Lord has done for you. Oh, see, y'all getting y'all are too pretty with it. Y'all are too cute with it. He, he delivered me from alcoholism. Oh, he, he put my marriage back together. Oh, 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 I don't know about you, but God has delivered me from too much to just sit back and wait. He has brought me through the fire. I've endured through some nights. I've endured through some crying, some hard times, some worry, some fear. I don't have time to just sit back and wait on the Lord. But I want to see what God is going to do. I want to see the miracle working hand of the Lord. I to step out of the darkness, Paul said, and step into the light and say, you know what? I've been letting the world affect me for far too long. I've been letting social media affect me for far too long. I've been letting music and opinions and, run, and the society and economy affect me for far too long. It's time to put some trust back into the Lord. standing up and clapping. Some people are crying. Some people are jumping. Well, that's just welcome to church, honey. Because when you look around and you see some of these people crying, some laughing, some hands waving, some hands clapping, you don't understand what they've been through. You don't understand that a car wreck should have put us in a wheelchair. You don't understand that a work accident should have put us in a, in a coma. But here we are today. And it's about time God's people became the walking, talking testimonies we were supposed to be. See, some of you, some of you used to be so rude and vulgar. You used to cuss like a sailor, make sailors embarrassed. And your friends and family say, well, now you're so respectful and polite. What happened to you? Some people used to dance 
for the club and now you're dancing for the Lord. Some of you used to be dope dealers, now you're hope dealers. And people around you are going to say, you changed. What happened to you? Oh, you're just fake. That's emotion. That, that's just, you're just, you're just feeling emotion. That, that's not a, that's, that's just you. That's nothing happened. You're just putting on a show. You used to go out with us on Friday night. Now you, now you don't do that. What, what happened to you? And I hope you never get to a point where we say, well, people just change. No, no, because what happened to you is you got in contact with something supernatural. You got in touch with something supernatural. And in the middle of your weeping, in the middle of the night, you mustered up a little bit of prayer from somewhere deep inside. You don't even know how you did it. You don't know how you found it. But you mustered up a little bit of a prayer. And all of a sudden, God's Spirit came in and filled you with His Holy Ghost. That's what changed. I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost will change your family. It will change your thinking. It will change your mindset. It will change your attitude. It's about time to let the Holy Ghost move. Here's, I need someone that's struggling to listen to me for a second. You've had enough sorrow in your life. You have had enough pain. You've had enough heartache. You've had enough brokenness. You've had enough worry, enough anguish, enough depression. You've had enough doubt. You've had enough guilt. And you've had enough shame to last a million lifetimes. But I want to tell you right now, you are in a place of healing. You are in a house of miracles. You are in a place where all you have to do is just say, Jesus, one word will end it all. One word can change your life. Whatever it is you need, you can just lift your hands and say, Jesus. Jesus. Oh. oh my goodness. It's about time, church. It's about time for the church to start acting like the church. That's why we're starting our monthly outreaches every, every Saturday, every first Saturday of the month. It's time the church got outside of the church. Sunday morning, I want to I share something with you. Sunday morning is not the church. Sunday morning is needed. It's encouraging. It's uplifting. It's, we join together in unity and worship. It's needed. It's biblical. It's commanded. But this is not the church. The church is tomorrow morning when you walk on the job and say, hey, my brother. I know, I know you've been going through some yeah. stuff in your family. Yeah. I know you're worried about your yeah. job, and, and I know, I know your, your, your health hasn't been so yeah. good. But let me tell you what God did for me. Yeah. I was going through what you were going through. Yeah. I dealt with what you dealt with. Yeah. Lord, I'm going to pray for you right yeah. now. Is that okay? Yeah. Lord, yeah. Lord, Lord, touch my brother. Touch my, that's what the church is. The church is not three songs and a sermon for an hour and 20 minutes. The church is the living, breathing, walking testimonies of the people who have been saved by His grace. And it's about time the church started acting like it. It's about time the church started acting like it. God told Moses, it's time to get my people out of their affliction. He told Abraham, it's time to trust in who I am and what I can do. He told David, he said, David, in the middle of all your mistakes, your hiccups, and your bad habits and your mess ups, David said, it's time to worship the King of Kings. And we have to realize that God didn't call us because we're able. He called us because he's able. Well, I could never make a difference. You're right, you can't. But through the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, I, I can never be that. You're right. You can't. We can't. But through the power of the hand of God, he didn't call us because we're able. He called us because he's able. And maybe you don't know him very well this morning. Maybe you're trying to find your way. Maybe it's been a while since you've really known him. 
but let me tell you who he's been to me. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He's the architect of the universe, and he's the manager of all time. He always was, always is, and always will be. He is unmoved. He is unchanged. He is undefeated, and he is never undone. He was bruised, but he brings healing. He was pierced, but he eases pain. He was persecuted, but he brought freedom. He was dead, but now he brings life. Oh, I'm not done yet. He's been more to me. He's been more than that to me. He has risen to bring power, and he reigns to bring peace. The world can't understand him. Armies can't defeat him. Schools can't explain him, and leaders can't ignore him. kill him. Nero couldn't crush him. The new age can't replace him. Politicians can't revoke his law. And society can't explain him away. When I fall, he lifts me up. When I fail, he forgives. When I'm weak, he is strong. When I'm lost, he's my way. Oh, he, he, he's still been more to me than that. He's still been more to me because when I'm afraid, he's my courage. When I stumble, he steadies me. When I hurt, he heals me. He is light. He is love. He is longevity. He is the Lord. Oh, come on. He is goodness. He is kindness. He is faithfulness. He is God. He is holy. He is righteous. He is powerful. He is pure. His ways are right and his word is eternal. He's still, but yet he has still been more to me than that because his will is unchanging and his mind is on us. His heart loves us. He is my savior. He is my guide, my peace, my joy, my comfort, my Lord. His bond is love. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. His goal for us is life and life more abundantly. He is the wisdom of the wise. He is the power of the powerful. He is the ancient of days. He's the ruler of rulers, and he's the leader of all leaders. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He will never mislead me and never forget me. He is wonderful. He is counselor. He is mighty God, everlasting Father. Prince of Peace, Lion of the tribe of Judah, the bright and morning star, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the Alpha, the Omega, the author and the finisher of my faith, the beginning and the end. He is, every, hear this, he is everything to everybody, everywhere, every time, in every way. That's my God this morning. That's the God that I have known to be so faithful to me. And it's time to step in to a new season. It's time to step in to a new season. You may be feeling doubt, fear, depression, anxiety. I don't care what it is. You may be feeling torn apart. You may be feeling like life has you against the ropes. You may have tried everything else you know, but I'm here to tell you that it's time to let God do what God wants to do. Would you stand with me this morning? It's time for the church to start acting like the church. It's time for the church to start acting like we really do know the Savior of the universe. I'm going to tell you, life is going to test you. Life is going to bring some things your way. But the Bible also says the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. So as great as it was back then, and as great the things they saw back then, what's about to take place here in this day and this hour is going to far outweigh and outpass and outpace what happened in the past. But in order for that to happen, Paul also says it's time to step out of the darkness. So in other words, there are some things that we don't have time for. 
I don't have time for envy. I don't have time for gossip. I don't have time for worry. I don't have time to be at odds with my brother and my sister. I don't have time to be yen yen behind the scenes. I don't have time to be worrying about tomorrow or worrying about yesterday. But I do have time to put a little bit of a praise in my voice. And I wonder if there's somebody right now that you would step out in faith and you would make your way to an altar or step out in the aisle. We're not going to embarrass anybody, but I believe if you would step out in faith, it's a symbol of faith saying, God, I'm taking a step towards you. God, I've gone through the motions long enough. God, it's time that I take a step forward. It's time I take a step towards you. That's it. Would you come forward? We're about to worship together. We're about to praise together. We're about to pray together. And I believe God is going to flood this place in a mighty, mighty way. But some of us, we have been focused on the wrong things. But it's time to get the focus back. It's time to tell the devil, I'm going to start acting the way God wanted me to act. I'm going to start being the church that God wanted me to be. I'm going to start letting praise enter my lips and not pity. I'm not going to let worry take over. I'm going to let worship take over. Would you lift your hands all over this building right now? There's about to be a spirit of praise fill this place. And I want you to know that every time in the Bible, when the people began to praise, God's miraculous power began to show up. Because what praise does is it gets the focus off of here, earthly me, and it puts the focus on the glory of, the, of God. And I want to tell you, when we begin to praise and we begin to sing in just a moment, God's presence is going to fill this place and we're going to see God move in supernatural ways. Would you let your voice out right now? What is it that you've been holding on to? What is the thing that you've been worried about that's stressing you out, that you're causing fear? What is the past thing that you're holding on to? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to let 